These cute little things are responsible for wiping out more than 70 animal species. It's crazy to think that this little thing, or that other little thing, the one that might be sleeping on your bed, peeing all over your house, or knocking up your neighbor's pet, is actually a massive species exterminator, right? I don't know about you, but when I was a little watermelon, my cat, who wasn't much bigger than a rat, used to bring small birds into the house. He'd leave them right at the doorstep. I used to think. Oh, yeah. Wow. Why don't I have a dad? Yeah, that's when I developed awareness and realized everyone else had a dad and I didn't. But that doesn't matter, because today I'm going to tell you why those furry creatures are such a threat to other animals. Did you know domestic cats are directly or indirectly linked to the extinction of at least 63 animal species? Some of those animals are The Stephen Island Wren, a bird from New Zealand The Guadalupe Macaw, which used to inhabit the Caribbean The Australian White-Footed Rabbit Rat Now, dogs are more laid-back or lazy Their impact is smaller, but that doesn't mean it's insignificant Studies from the IUCN and the Smithsonian indicate that domestic dogs have been involved in the extinction of at least 11 species. Like the little spotted kiwi from New Zealand's North Island, and some marsupial species in Oceania. What? Can my fat-ass dog really be an animal exterminator? But he's fat, and has a fat ass. Well, yes. The moment you take your eyes off that barrel of lard, it turns into a little demon. They seem harmless as pets, but once they're left unsupervised they can turn into wild beasts. When they get used to living on the streets or in the wild, they become unstoppable creatures especially when introduced into ecosystems where local animals never evolved defenses against them. Cats, by nature, are already very efficient predators. They've got an excellent hunting instinct. And sometimes, they hunt even when they're well-fed. They do it for fun. It's estimated that in the United States alone, cats kill between 1.3 and 4 billion birds and up to 22 billion small mammals every year. And a big chunk of those deaths aren't out of hunger, it's just because the little bastard felt like killing. The biggest problems with cats are on islands, since birds and reptiles usually don't have natural land predators. So when they see that cute little thing coming, they're not afraid and just chill there. A single cat can wipe out entire populations of endemic species if it feels like it. Dogs, on the other hand, are dangerous because when they go feral, they usually form packs. That lets them chase down and kill prey bigger than themselves, like kangaroos, deer, wild boars, large birds, and more. Another dangerous thing about dogs is that they can spread diseases like rabies, canine distemper, and parvovirus to wildlife, causing population collapses. For example, Canine distemper has devastated populations of hyenas and lions in Africa. In many ecosystems, dogs also displace foxes, small wolves, or other local carnivores. In places like Australia or New Zealand, dogs attack ground-nesting birds, like the kiwi, which simply can't defend themselves against them. In short, it's your fault, humans, for introducing them into ecosystems that weren't prepared for them. Anyway. If you don't want your cat out there wiping out other animals, keep it indoors. A cat that doesn't go outside can't hunt or spread diseases. Plus, they'll live longer since they're at less risk. I doubt they'll get run over inside your bedroom. If they're going out to the yard or park, make sure they wear a collar that makes noise, like a bell or something, to reduce their hunting efficiency. And also get them sterilized. For dogs, make sure they're not running loose in natural areas, don't forget to vaccinate them and sterilize them too. That's it. Bye, bitch.